everyone. I wanted to do a quick rundown of what we achieved in 2022, in part because our team changes and people come on through the year and we were trying to do an article and I realised that even I wasn't sure what we've done. So um, I wanted to just run through some of the achievements. I think sometimes we can be so busy day to day doing little things that we don't realise what we've done. Um, so this is just a little bit of a celebration of everything that's been achieved by the amazing team who have come on this journey with me, blind crazy to learn and make things better. So starting off with Netflix and streaming platform, really, uh, we added 86 titles in 52 weeks, 53 short films, eight feature films, 16 series, one performance, four compilations, four interviews. Pretty impressive. Editorial, however, 343 film-related articles. We published 172 film database articles and 160 articles, including 95 film reviews. Those are impressive numbers. Uh, but I would say that is only actually the icing on the cake, and we didn't cover a lot of stuff because we didn't have the results. Um, data is where you'll see what I mean by that. So we transferred our film database from Lesbix to Sapphic Services, so it could really be kind of ring-fenced and part of the bigger picture of what we're doing. We added 628 records to our Sapphic Stories database. That brings our database now to over 2,127 records. All of those are Sapphic Stories on TV, film, short speeches, series. It's a drop in the ocean because we know, for example, 50 features released in 2021, 60 features in 2020. It's not even the biggest picture there is, but you have to start somewhere and that's pretty impressive. So we added 177 features, 381 shorts, 38 TV series, TV series and 22 web series. So that's just the headline numbers. In terms of what we're actually doing, in January, our second internship scheme ended and some of our interns decided to stay with us. Amy and Bethan graduated and became volunteers with us. And that was fantastic. They also both went on to look after their departments. Um, and, and that was part of that kind of empowerment thing. We changed our Python on Lesbix, ready to prepare for 2022 opportunities, create partner opportunities and launch an affiliate scheme. Um, and that was probably about six months ahead of the industry in terms of everyone's now changed their prices. Come February, we attended the National Diversity Awards in Liverpool because Netflix was shortlisted for an award. We didn't win, but it was a fantastic night. And I also got to share that with a friend of mine, Chloe, who runs a meetup group that supports women, and also attend with Jane Ozan, who I've been working with um, the back end of 2021 and 2022. And it was just really nice to see so many amazing women in our community doing good things. So that was a fantastic event, even though we didn't win an award. We were shortlisted, and that in itself is an achievement. In February, we also supported LGBT History Month with a selection of curated films that we made available free to libraries, community groups, to be able to connect with their community. And then we also showed them online through Lesbics for those around the world that couldn't access a local screening. Um, it's also worth remembering that February is an important month for us. We launched Netflix on the 24th of February, 2019. Yep, we are only three years old. Um, we will be four years on the 24th of February, 2023. Uh, we are still a startup. We are bootstrapping, we are pre-investment in the most part, but that is gonna change. And we have already achieved so much, which is exciting. March was the beginning of what we call the crazy period. We launched an internship with our third round and had people like Cassandra join us. Um, 8th of March, I kind of embarrassingly had my picture stuck on a wall in the middle of Lewisham as I was approached to be a Nora of Lewisham, for the Nora project and a Shiro um, as well. And I, it was, I was told it was inspiring the youth of my borough where I live in London, and that was really talking to me. And then once I said yes, they told me they were going to get a giant life-size photo of me and stick it on a wall. And I was like, okay. Um, but it was so much fun, and it is inspiring. And I think it is important to empower the next generation of women that they can achieve something. Um, and obviously Lewisham has quite a diverse mix of, of different um, cultures and economic backgrounds. So... I guess I'm really proud we've made a bit of an impact here. I joined an accelerator to try and learn the things I didn't know about um, through Hatch, and that's been invaluable. We restarted our cinemas, 
with Sappho Cinema. Caroline and I met really early days when I launched Leslix and we did Sappho Cinema together. The first event was in March. Uh, I also came on board as a sponsor for Spin, from Lisa Tedesco short film, and that was really important for us to kind of showcase some of the small projects that can become big things, and that should be released later this year, so keep an eye out for that. We attended BFI Flair, and oh my God, do you know how weird it is when you get to meet volunteers that you've never met in person? Everyone is not the height of a TV screen. Um, it was really nice to see some of our team face-to-face -face and meet, um, COVID meant that some of us had been working together for between six months and two years and never met each other. So BFI Flair was a great opportunity to come together and that was so much fun. Also in March, just before BFI Flair, I actually worked on a big event with the Ozan Foundation at the Foreign Office, um, really close to my heart around banning conversion therapy. Um, and that was something that was not really sapping, but affects so many sapphic people all around the world that for me it was a really important project to do um but also let's be realistic i had to do some consultancy because lesbics and all the things i'm doing they're still new and we needed some kind of cash flow so i managed to really find a project that i loved and was passionate about and the ozan foundation was a fantastic period of time that meant i had a busy period but we achieved a lot and was really important work to be done as well so come April, um, focusing back on, I guess, let's fix full time. We did an April Fool's gig kind of game. Um, we've really been seeing everyone talking about the kind of wanting big stories. Happiest season obviously has come out the Christmas before. Um, and some of my team were really good writers and really wanted to do something fun. So we'd suggested a small April Fool's and they came up with an entire script story outline and so we kind of got a bit away with this and we had some fun. So we, launched, we announced the launch of Apartment 3B, a fantastic film with a massive headline, A-list stars. I mean, honestly, we would have still got to make it, but it was an April Fool's. Um, and it got mixed results, but it was fun. And actually, some people also wanted to make the film and I had to remind them that that was someone else's story and there's IP and copyright. But again, it started a conversation and it was fun and it got some interest. Um, I got to host a Q&A for maybe Sunday in April as well. And we had another Sappho Cinema in London. It's really nice to do the face-to-face -face screenings. I started some consultancy, helping some small filmmakers, talking to women about different films. Um, one of the first ones we started at the store in was lev cooking. If there are any women out there who have an interest in Jewish community, in IVF and starting a family, if you kind of, really think you want to see more films with those kind of stories. We're, we're consulting with Lev Cookin, um, and we're looking for funding for that at the moment. Um, and I just had a really good year talking. That started in April and is ongoing. Lesbian Day of Visibility, we thought we would promote every single film on Lesbix. It took a week to go through all the films. But again, that shows how many titles we have. And we didn't want to just pick what we thought were the top five. We wanted to showcase everything. So we ran through them as stories on Instagram and on tweets and on Facebook. And it took five days to get through the whole catalogue, but we did it. And we celebrated the Lesbian Day of Visibility and the film visibility. We also, at this point, um, I started working with an amazing woman called Karen Frost. And Sapphic If really kind of started to come about. Sapphic If is a project that's about investment in film. Uh, we both share a lot of common uh, goals, dreams, desires. We want to bring back that $1 million to $2 million film budget. I don't know if anyone really knows this, but we lost those budgets. Those were the, the real classic days. I can't think straight. Imagine me and you. Um, those are all in that $1, $2 $2 million budget of film. These days, you get under 500000 The indie films, you know, they're great. Forever not, maybe. Rainbow's End. Um maybe someday all these films are in those budgets and they're fantastic because technology's come a long way and then you have oscar bait 10 million dollars plus you know ammonite um colette there's all sorts of films coming through that are like you know crazy budgets that sweet spot's missing and that's what we really want to bring back so we started asking people to submit their stories and their pitch decks for us to have a look and we're really starting to work on how we invest in stories um and also create an ecosystem um so that started really kind of back in april um on to may i attended can 
for the first time in 18 years. I am now showing my age. <laughs> um, and that was fantastic. While I was at Cannes, Caroline held uh, Sappho Cinema without me, and that was our third one. Uh, also, Sarah Caitlin attended QFX in May. We um, did an interview with Shutter and Slate. Brimo interviewed me, and that was really interesting. I also provided some consultancy for a film called Wildfire. Look out for Wildfire in 2023, a fantastic feature film that's going through um, from the writer of Rainbow's End. This is her first directorial uh, debut feature film. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, I started consulting with National Hate Crime Awareness Week in May, uh, a little bit aside from Lesbix, um, but again, close to my heart. The amount of stats there are around LGBT people being victims of hate crimes it was a way for me again to bring in a little bit of money to help keep things going, but also to do something that's, that's core to my passion. And that's been really helpful in helping them to just again, tighten up some processes, automate some things, make themselves more efficient. At the end of May, my partner, Katie, and I applied for some funding for Planet Nation to come back because we thought that might be uh, helpful for the broader Sapphic community. We got some funding, so we seconded two of our team members from Lesbix over, in fact, three of our team members over, um, and they started working on relaunching Planet Nation. Um, and that started, the, I guess, the transition we've got to now, where we've moved all of our editorial content from Lesbix over to what is now called Sapphic Nation. Um, and that's going to be really key in allowing Lesbix to focus on film screenings and streaming and to allow the editorial to kind of become bigger and to cover more than just film, the bigger sapphic community. Um, we started supporting Love Me Lex, which is a really exciting web series, which you are going to see coming out in 2023. This is the first investment Sapphic If has been working on. And it's really important to say it's not just about the money. We also are providing marketing support and guidance and strategic support and real tangible information and guidance to that series to make sure it's as successful as possible um, and this is the first project of many it's a smaller project to start with but the idea is to build on it and build up and again Karen and I working together on this has been integral in getting this first project together the Love Me Let's Do with Tanya and Perth um, and Steph they're doing fantastic things and we're really excited to be bringing this first project to light and obviously you know naturally let's let's be working really closely with this as well um, but yeah, that's a huge project. That's exciting. Well, that's the first half of the month done. Finally, we've hit June. Um, another Sappho Cinema happened. We got to finally relaunch the Sapphic Creators Network and start helping filmmakers with strategy, information, guidance, finding out what needs they had. We realised that it's all very well offering the films for you to look at, but we want you to know that we're also helping the creators to get funding more easily, to market their films or the series more easily. So the Creators Network were really important. We started off talking about distribution windows. Um, Sarah Kalen did an interview with Motherland Fort Salem. Um, and we started our next intern rounds where uh, Lucy joined us along with a few other women. Um, we launched Stronger Together and relaunched Plant Nation formally and started that getting out and about. And a really kind of exciting and busy summer happened there. We should also know at this point that we know June is five months, but we also are really realistic. We knew we were not going to be visible. Five months is tough. All the corporates bring out all the rainbows and as small businesses, it becomes really invisible. So we didn't do anything for five months, really. Um, we focused on the 1st of July. All we talked about was uh, queer all year. And then on the 1st of July, we announced 30 films dropping on Lesfix uh, with the hashtag queer all year. And we celebrated the return of our visibility, that the rainbow suddenly meant you could find actual queer organisations and that we were visible again and we had the kind of access to our community again. Um, we also attended a cinema um, careers event in East London through Cine Circle and got to talk to people about their careers in the media and really kind of offer some inspiration that you can work in the media and also in the LGBT environment. We attended um, an, a filmocracy market online, sounds really boring, but that got us in contact with some really good filmmakers with some bigger budgets and really got us to talk around some of the kind of future plans for Lesbics outside of India and more towards big budget productions. 
more Sapphic Creators Networks happened. And then we got to do Elfest. Um, after two years of online film festivals, we got to return to Wales for the last ever Elfest. Um, it was a bittersweet reunion because we knew it was the last one. But myself and my partner, uh, Katie, got to really kind of share what lesbians can be face to face. I think it was the first time she'd got to really see lesbics in person um, because she joined the team while we were in lockdown. Um, and together under a tent watching uh, live music, we were both inspired for the new name for the Elfest Lesbics Film Festival because you can't keep a festival named after the festival that doesn't exist in it. So we came up with a brand called Sapphix and that really is also exciting because it's something we came up with together. So that was July. Um, I also got to um, join the Intermediate Steering Committee. That's really exciting. And we also started to talk to Fan Fusion and help them again with some strategy and marketing ahead of their, their um, convention. Um, and that was again, another chance to share some of that knowledge and advice. And then with Karen and Safik here, we started doing research on trends on what's happening in Safik film and TV. Um, and that was also a very exciting time and started to build on what next year can look like. Come August, something really magical happened. A father got in touch. He wanted his daughter to see more authentic stories and more stories that were about sapphic women, LGBT, but that were safe for a 12 to 16 year old. And it was just so enlightening and enriching and exciting that a father could reach out and say, Les Flix has got some, some really good authentic things, but is it safe for my child? And the fact that his father felt that he could do that and he wanted to do that for his daughter. I immediately talked to Katie, talked to the team. I was like, what, we can do this. What can we do? And we launched Chick Flicks within a week because we do have lots of content that's child based. We have stuff that isn't. So we wanted to really separate that. So we launched a new subscription level called Chick Flicks. Um, without even launching it officially, we had six people sign up as subscriptions um, just because it existed. And we haven't actually technically properly launched it, um, but it now has lots of titles. And it was just really exciting to know that we can make a difference for the next generation as well, because we all know when you came out, it's because of something you saw on screen, something you connected with. And I think I kind of was aware of that, but hadn't really realised how we could really impact that. We also um, launched a Sapphic crowdfunder and started talking about a Sapphic utopia. As I guess, as the team came together and we discussed what we were doing, we realized there's so much more we could be doing. Um, more Sapphic Creators Network events happened. We talked about streaming platforms and general networking. Then in September, we got to another face-to-face -face event. We got to go to Fan Fusion. Um, Katie was in our element tech-wise. We got to create a family fortunes and fandoms um, and uh, have a discussion about kind of sapphic stories on screen with the audience and it was just three days of just living in fandoms and it was so much fun um in october amy attended london film festival we had another sapphic creators network meeting on zoom i got invited to a discussion about a league of their own and as a decorated softballer um and also running lesbics, like a league of their own coming out was so fun for me because I got to kind of combine my two passions. Um, and it was just nice to be able to talk about it and to combine those two stories and share some insights. So that was really exciting. And then I launched some consultancy as well in September because I wanted to talk to more um, people around industry insights, strategy. Um, so I started consulting on feature films um, with filmmakers as well as the informal things I've been doing before so there's some other filmers as well that at the end of this I'll tell you what's coming out. October was more Savic Creators Network talking about how YouTube's changing. Uh, we appeared on the new me and my partner did blatant product placement where we found an opportunity to talk about the cost of living crisis in the UK and we were so happy to use our lesbian bag and so we got some national news kind of exposure. I mean I'll put it this way. When you own a startup and you can't afford advertising, you have to be creative. So uh, that was an interesting sidebar. 
I also started consulting with Zodiac Bar in October and this has been so much fun. I don't know how many people know that I worked at Southopia and the Glass Bar when I first moved to London with Elaine McKenzie um, and I used to love it and I've forgotten how much I love it um, because I'm a social person and the pandemic has meant that all my social has been through a screen. Uh, Zodiac Bar is a really passionate, amazing LGBT bar. It's trans owned by a woman called Jade. She is so full of energy and so full of desire to amplify trans women and to provide a safe space for the whole LGBT community. And it's been really nice working with them as well, again, around kind of processes and efficiency and, you know, making that bar something special in London. Um, and that's been super fun. And I'm really excited to see what we can do in 2023 to really kind of work with that bar and also connect the community with that bar more as well. Um, so October was a bit of a different experience, whilst also obviously everything else that's going on, um, but super fun. November, we attended a Brunel Careers event, and that was really interesting because that allowed us to connect again with potential volunteers, interns, talk to industry people and, and really kind of also got us onto a course. So Katie and I are both now on another course where we're learning more about what we're missing. For me, it's really important as well that I'm doing this with Katie because she's become a key part of this organisation and of all the brands we're doing. Um, and we're really kind of, I guess, taking things to the next level. I got to attend a preview of Polarised film at BAFTA. That's from the creators that I can't think straight and the world unseen. That is going to be coming out soon as well and definitely a film to keep an eye out. And we started a rebrand of Lesfix at this stage and to kind of take what was the ecosystem under Lesfix, pull it apart, separate it and make it make more sense. Um, December, we started to create some documents and templates to help creators. We relaunched Sapphic If and Sapphic Services to, to reflect the new focus. Um, and we supported a holiday shorts event from Rainbow, Dark Rainbow Films, uh, where they did a screening event. 2022 was just a few things. I literally had to go through my emails and my calendars, and Katie and I have been going through Instagram to work out what we did. It's a huge, monumental achievement. And I have to say, I couldn't have done it without the hundreds of women, volunteers, interns, um, subscribers, event attendees. I can't even begin to list all the amazing women um, who have come through my life in the last year. But I'm hoping that most of them have shared and learned something from me, and I certainly have shared and learned from them. Um, I always tell everyone I work with that you're all an expert in what you do, and I have bits that I'm an expert in, but there's stuff I don't know. And it's by sharing that with each other that things become great. 2022 has been a roller coaster. There's been some fantastic stuff. There's been some really tough stuff. We've had highs, 30 people on the team and lows of five. We've had times when the universe has just put everything into abundance and put everything on our plate in front of us and it's all gone really well. And then times where we've been literally banging our head against the brick wall. And I think what I realised was we needed to, I wanted to kind of, I guess, tell everyone what we've done and what we've achieved. So that if you came on board for one month or you came on part of the year or you're thinking of coming on board with us in 2023, you can just see a little bit of what we've done. It's actually crazy what we've done. And I couldn't do it without everyone around me. Um, some of the stuff I'm doing with different groups of people. And again, I think that's why for me, it was important for me to reflect on all the different projects I've worked on from the Ozan Foundation to National Hate Crime Awareness Week to Zodiac Bar um, with, you know, Lesfix and Sapphic Services and Sapphic here and, you know, um, Sap Planet Nation. With all these things, um, there's so much opportunity for 2023 because actually the universe is giving out so much. 2022 has been challenging, but I think it's preparing us for this year. So I want to finish with saying, 2023 is going to be amazing. We've got so much planned. You'll see what comes out. But I want to just list a few projects that you need to keep an eye out for. Wildfire. I think we mentioned it earlier. Love Me Lex. Sacred Vision. If You Only Knew. Polarized. Dead in Love. Serpentine Pink. Lebkuchen. 
behind the roads. That's, I think, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine projects. Nine projects that we know are going to be massive in 2023. And again, that's not even scratching the surface of what is going to be an amazing year. And I think I also need to mention that we've been working a lot to try and help the Save Warrior Nun fandom. I've done a lot of consultancy, um, giving them a lot of insight and skills and tips to really make the most of their campaign. It's been really nice seeing some of that implemented. Um, that fandom is doing amazing things. We've also been reached out now from Motherland Port Salem, and I'm excited to help them. And, and that's why Sapphic Strength is launching, because I want to do that more. Um, I want to help more women, because I just believe that we, women are over 50% of the population. How is misogyny still holding us back? And I think it's because we just need more opportunities to come together. 2022 has been amazing, but 2023 is year of the Sapphic. And I'm excited and I'm just so grateful for every single woman who has come through my life in the last 12 months. So I just wanted to kind of run through what my 2022 has been like, because I think I'm very aware that my family have hardly seen me. My friends definitely haven't seen me. I've been working 40 hour weeks minimum. I, I did, however, I must say thank you, Katie, for making me take two days off at Christmas. But it's been hard. But then I also know that if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Um, but it will get easier as well, because as we do grow, it gets easier. Um, so this is my, I guess, end of year snapshot of why my friends haven't seen me, why my family don't hear from me very often, why sometimes in a team meeting I even burst into tears because I'm stressed and tired, um, why I seem to be available for meetings at one in the morning, um, but also why we've achieved so much. Because actually when I look back on 2022, it's nuts what we've achieved. Um, so thank you. Um, and in particular, I say I can't name everyone, but Katie, Joanna, Amy, Bethan, Sam, Sam, was it Sam? Um, Amanda, Lucy, Cassandra, um, Marcy, oh, Aoife, oh my God, I, I'm not, Mia, Maya, um, <laughs> so many names, uh, Christy, uh, Nicole, Shauna, um, Emily. Lisa, oh my God. And there's so many other people and I've probably forgotten a few. Uh, Lauren, uh, another Lauren, a couple of Laurens. Um, so many women who trusted me. Um, and I think it paid off. Um, so that's it. I wanted to say thank you. Hopefully it's gives you a bit of insight on what we're doing. It isn't always obvious what we've been doing. And I just think as well, I wanted to just really kind of explain the bigger picture. 2023, we've got so much planned um, and it's going to be big, it's going to be better. Um, we've really got a good, sustainable business model. But 2023 is going to be about bringing more businesses with us and building on that to create a SAPI Utopia. So I look forward to working with lots more of you next year. Thank you and happy 2023.